welcome to Grandma's Garden. I'm Evelyn and our co-host is Kathy. We are going to take you through the seasons, through our gardens. Um, Nate mentioned yesterday of the fact that between the two of us we have something like a hundred years of experience. Um, I guarantee you neither one of us are going to see 59 again but I'm not telling beyond that. But we want to talk about the gardens. We want to share our knowledge of gardens with you and see if we can bring to you some of the joy that we have in doing our gardens. This is my co-host, Kathy, and I would like you to welcome Kathy to uh, this show. Kathy, go ahead. What we want to tell you this uh, in this first thing is what you should be seeing in bloom in your garden right now, what crops are ready to mm -hmm. harvest, what you might be finding at the farmer's market if you take advantage of that opportunity. Then we'll launch into the chores. There's always the work. Things that need to be done right now, things you might be wanting to plan for doing a few weeks from now. And then we'll suggest that you review your season. So we'll start, Evelyn, what's in bloom in your garden? What's in bloom right now in my garden is, one of the things in bloom is borage. This plant uh, I ha has been around since medieval times, e e probably before that. But borage to the medieval knights was a flower of courage. They wore borage for courage. And one of the things I can tell you about the flowers, if you see the pretty purple flowers, they are edible. You can uh, clean them off, wash them off, uh, look for any insects, uh, protein, but I don't want to eat it. And then you can add them to your salads or your food to make your plate really quite pretty. The second thing that I've got in bloom right now is, <laughs> Excuse me. Black-eyed Susans. Who doesn't like black-eyed Susans? They are so happy. They bring so much joy to the garden. Um, I've often wondered how related they are to coneflowers because they look a lot like a coneflower with the, the little black head in the middle. And this is, as far as I'm concerned, a cousin spectacular and Kathy this is Gloriosa Daisy Gloriosa Daisy uh, uh, they're, they're gorgeous in the garden now both the black-eyed Susans and the coneflowers are perennials which means they come back every year you don't have to plant them all you need to do is just keep the dead flowers cut off and they'll continue blooming on through the season love perennials and I brought a little flower that's, we don't have any other pictures of it, but I don't know how well this is going to show up. This is what I call a boppy little flower that just adds color all over your garden. It, it's just tiny, and it's called Rose Campium, and it was a gift from Kathy, from her garden to my garden, and um, the seeds do blow around, it, but it's easy to control. And it's it just, in all of my gardens, it's uh, seeding itself and uh, volunteers, I think we call them, uh, just a happy plant to have in your garden. I think the next one plant we want to talk about are lilies. Aren't they beautiful? Aren't they just, just gorgeous? That particular lily is a Silk Road lily. It's almost six feet tall. It has a, an extremely intense fragrance. Lilies are planted from bulbs best planted in the fall, so you might want to think about putting some lilies on, on your list for fall planting. When the lilies are finished, you want to cut them back, cut the flower heads off. Uh, this is a different lily. This is one that's a Turk's cap. The petals go backwards. Um, not. Not quite as fragrant as the Silk Road, but still a nice addition. These also get very tall, um, but when they're all done blooming, you will want to cut them right below the last flower so that the energy goes into the bulb for next year. 
as opposed to making seeds, we don't want seeds, the lilies really propagate from uh, bulbs rather than, than seeds. It's a beautiful, lovely plant. I think next picture we have for you is of Kathy's uh, front porch uh, to show you uh, how your garden can come together and make, um, yes, there's the um, bird bath. And in the background is purple, I think it's purple, Minarda. Uh, it's absolutely lovely. And in the pot is? Calibricoa. Calibricoa, love that. The Minarda is a big attractor for bees. And in this day and age when we're so concerned about pollination and about the decline of the bee population, uh, I try to grow as many things as I can that the bees love. Uh, Minarda will tolerate some shade uh, it has a bloom season. It's in glorious flower right now. Another couple of weeks it will be done and we'll cut it back down to the ground. The Calibricoa is an annual pot plant. Um, an absolutely stunning performer. I bought that pot, that's one pot of plants. There's probably four or five plants in it and it has bloomed continuously throughout the season. It's lovely. I've had great luck with Calibricoa. I think the next picture that we're showing you is a, a picture of Kathy's porch. Um, with, not wisteria. What, what, what? Clematis. 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 Uh, growing up the side of her porch. Whoops. Wrong picture. That's okay. Stay there. <laughs> we're fine. That's hydrangea. That is one of my pride and joys. That is an endless summer hydrangea. It, the bloom, as huge as it is, does not need to be staked. It will hold its own head up. Um, it's starting to get a little fussy. I may have to cut it, but I will bring it in and dry it. I'll just put it in a vase and let it dry, and I'll have that flower, that beautiful flower, all winter long. Um, I think our next picture is a plant that I have been trying to name for a number of years. And I think it's Jacob's Ladder. Um, if you know different, <laughs> <laughs> let me see where it is. Down at the bottom with the yellow blooms on it, it has the striped leaves. Now, I think it's Jacob's Ladder. I have a couple of plants of it. And uh, if you know that it is something else, um, we'll figure out a way for you to get in touch. And you can see in the background the rose campion, how pretty that looks just coming up around. I think next we're going to go to coneflowers. Yes, there's some coneflowers there from my garden and some red monarda. I think of that red monarda as my 4th of July firecrackers because it looks like firecrackers exploding and they always bloom by the 4th of July. It's just a happy plant to have in my garden. But go on, Kathy, with coneflowers. Okay. Um, coneflower, I guess they call it coneflower because it has this little coney thing yeah. that comes up at the top. This is a uh, perennial, blooms profusely, will do in sun or light shade. Um, the monarch butterflies really yes. like this. Yes. The bees like it as well. It uh, Actually, the botanical name for coneflower is echinacea. Mm -hmm. One of those things that's supposed to be very good for colds. Um, this does seed itself. This is one exception to the deadhead yes. rule yes. because the birds just love the seeds. Right. Right. They just totally love the seeds, and once the weather turns cold, we have a frost, and the garden's all kind of brown and dead, then these beautiful little goldfinches are there helping themselves to the seeds. It is definitely something that I do leave in my winter garden. We'll, we'll get into winter gardenscaping, but that is definitely anything that has a seed like that. I leave in my garden. I don't cut it down. So what birds are looking for food they will at least have some seeds for my garden to keep them going. While we're talking about yes. seeds, how about self-sowing annuals? You and I both have those in our garden. These are what make the volunteers. Um, I have these 
lovely cosmos all over the garden. Um, they all come up by themselves. If they come up where I don't want them, I just pull them out, kind of pretend they're weeds. <laughs> um, dill yes. is another annual that self sows. Um, it's an herb, but it also has a nice flower to it. Yeah. Uh, the borage uh, self sows. Yeah, the borage will, and this self sows copiously. But again, when it overtakes, you just pull it out because you do get a lot of it. And the same thing with the one that I showed you earlier, the rose campion. This will self sow, and if it gets too much, you pull it out like a weed. But they're they're containable. They're invasive but containable. Now, if you use preen in your garden, one of those things that inhibits the weeds, you, your self-sowing flowers will not be there. You won't get any happy little volunteers because what preen is, is it is a germination inhibitor and uh, prevents the weeds from coming up, but it also prevents mm -hmm. any kind of volunteers mm -hmm. from coming up. Do we want to talk about what's coming in at the farmer's market? Okay, I was there yesterday, and we are really lucky to have a farmer's market in practically every community around here. Lake Orion has a wonderful one. It is better than it has been in years. Yes. Um, I was there yesterday. Oxford has a farmer's market. Auburn Hills has a farmer's market. Uh, Clarkston. And then, of course, there is the Oakland County Market over mm -hmm. there on Telegraph and... Uh, Pontiac Road. Pontiac Road, maybe? Yeah. Uh, anyway, there are signs over there. If you go down Telegraph, there's a sign that says uh, Pontiac Market. They're open Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and if it grows in Michigan, they've got it there. All right, what am I going to find? Okay. Really uh, from a garden at the farmer's market. Okay, yesterday in uh, great profusion, lettuce, oh. uh, herbs, okay. green beans, uh, Tomatoes coming in, first corn, honey rock melons. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Now, the Lake Orion Market also has a couple of organic vendors that have eggs, uh, organic chicken, and I believe they have some beef. There's honey, uh, maple syrup. Wow. Lady who makes her own soap. Okay. Um, to just go on very quickly, I'm going, we're going to quickly talk about the chores you need to be doing in your garden right now. You need to be pulling out any diseased plants. You need to be thinning out your plants so there is room around them for the air to circulate so that you don't get mildew in your plants. Um, watering, water, water, water. Your plants need water. Uh, don't depend on the rain because it's, it seems to be skirting us. Uh, weeding, you've got you've to weed because the weeds are pulling the nutrients out of the soil you want in your plants. Kathy, dividing perennials. Uh, this will be a chore probably for next week. Some of these things that have finished blooming, uh, daylilies, iris. Uh, the monarda I'm going to hold off on a little bit. Um, but this is the time to do that, especially with your iris. This is the great time to uh, lift them up and share with your friends. And do you have some to share with me, or can I share oh, with I'll you? Oh, definitely. We'll definitely share. We need to take a break right now, uh, regroup our thoughts. Uh, there's so much to talk about. Um, well, we'll take a break, and we'll be back in a few minutes. As the summer begins to wind down, enjoy the transition into fall by loading up the family and taking a trip to Friendship Park for Barn Days on Saturday, September 13th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. There will be plenty of activities for the whole family, including a petting farm, carnival games, inflatables, farm fresh produce, and a wagon ride. But be forewarned, you may encounter some Yankees and Rebels who don't know the Civil War is over. The cost is $5 per vehicle and proceeds help fund Orion Township's concerts and other events throughout the year. For more information, you can call 248 391 extension 305, or visit oriontownship.org. Hello, 
and welcome back to Grandma's Garden. I'm Evelyn, and co-host is Kathy, and we will be your hosts for Grandma's Garden. Um, we were talking about, uh, unfortunately, garden chores. As beautiful as the garden is, there's a reason it looks that nice, is because you put some work into it. And I'd like to turn it over to Kathy for a bit and let her talk about our garden chores. This is the perfect time to trim everything up. Get all your plants cleaned up. Pick off the dead leaves, cut off the dead buds, make a little space. For the annuals, uh, the cosmos and your zinnias, marigolds, things like that, time to give them one last shot of fertilizer. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now the perenni right. perennials, you don't want to fertilize. We talked about that yesterday. Right. But, uh, right. It's time to stop fertilizing with the shrubs and, and the perennials because you don't want them to put on any soft growth right. with fall coming right. on. We hate to think of fall, but it, it'll be here before we know yeah. it. So uh, when any diseased, Evelyn was talking a little bit about diseased material, things with mildew, be sure you don't put that in your compost. Pile. Right, right. You want to bag that up and, and put it in your it. regular you trash. Don't you don't even want to put it in the yard waste. No. And uh, when we get into our veggie segment, we'll talk a little bit about some of the diseases to look for. Mm -hmm. um, now is the time to check for um, sun shift. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. You know, we, we think this part of our garden is sunny, this part of our garden is shady. Yeah. Um, the sun moves with the season. It's time to take a walk around the yard and see if those spots you thought were full sun still are. Yeah. Um, the leaves will fall off the trees and things will be different. Well, something else you can do right now, too, is the lilies are finishing and you can uh, you want to cut like all your day lilies, all your oriental lilies, all those tall brown stalks. You want to cut those off so that everything still looks pretty. And what else? I, I had it in my mind. It just went out of my mind. Oh, the hostas. The hosta flowers are done. And they are just going to be sticks poking out of your garden. So you want to cut those back too now. Um, your hostas and your lilies will feed from the sun into the leaves. You don't have to leave the stalks mm -hmm. like you do with tulips. Tulips, you have to leave that stalk and those leaves in order to feed the bulb. But the dried up stalks from the other two, you don't have to do that. Kathy, go on. Okay, this is a time to prune up any shrubs mm. that, however, you don't want to do anything with your flowering shrubs. No, no, Any no. of the spring flowering shrubs are best pruned right after they bloom. Um, if they're in sad shape, I actually have hired somebody to come in and prune up my whole flowering shrub bed because wow. I didn't yes. I didn't get to it in the spring. I had damage from the storm in April and I was waiting mm -hmm. for the siding guy. Uh, but normally you would not, uh, and this includes lilac, honeysuckle, uh, wygelia, right. mock orange, any of those things best pruned right after uh, because you will prune, they set their buds for right. next season and if you prune them now, you're gonna cut all of those off. Kathy's well aware that I had a holy hairy fit <laughs> and I mean screaming memes. Uh, I live in a condo complex and they take care of it. it's all common ground. And I was working in my kitchen and I looked up and somebody was out there with clippers clipping away on my, uh, Lilac. Lilac. I went screaming, stop, stop, stop. I'm not going to have buds next year. They, they clipped them off. Can I strangle them? Is that okay? <laughs> Probably can. Thank you. I want to. <laughs> That's, now I know why I didn't have any left this year. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Did you bring any of your um, indoor plants out for the summer? Oh, definitely. Now's the time to think about it. Uh, you don't want to wait until frost threatens <laughs> to put those babies back inside. Uh, anybody that needs repotting, now's a good time because they'll have six to eight weeks to get used to the new pot before it's time to bring them in. You definitely want to bring those plants in before. I just had a thought. <laughs> okay. We, we take the plants out in the spring and we call them hardening off. Yep. Are we bringing them in and softening them off now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this could be. Um, they're not used to the drier temperatures right. that we have indoors and uh, the heat being on. 
So uh, you definitely want to bring all of your plants from outdoors that come in, um, in before you turn your heat on. Right. I have a do. I do have a little tip for you though. Uh, bringing in your plants that have been outside, uh, critters like to live in the dirt, and. I bring my plant in and all of a sudden I have these little things flying around my house. Well, I have, through trial and error, learned. If I cover the dirt with those little um, glass stones that you get for aquariums and stuff, it seems to smother them. I have tried aluminum foil. Pack the aluminum foil around, not up against the plant stalk, but around it and that keeps them in and somehow or another they don't come out and bother me. So just a, a word to the wise. Those little guys are fungus gnats. Oh. They, they look like fruit flies. Yes, in, yes. In the, in the dead of winter when you don't have any fruit and you're wondering where did I get these fruit flies? Well, right. they're the fungus gnats. Uh, but if, they are free entertainment for the cat. <laughs> well, this is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an you, another thing you want to look at, if you have any tropical type for, uh, plants mm -hmm. like uh, citrus or uh, gardenias, Mm. You want to check the underside of the leaf for scale. Oh, if they're dear. little brown yes. spots and you can take your fingernail and just scrape them off. Uh, what best way to get rid of those is just pull yourself up a chair out on the porch and mix up some soapy <laughs> water. Um, get a washcloth yeah. or something yeah. and wash, wash off every off. leaf and every bit of stem. I have wow. a couple of treasures. I, normally I wouldn't bother to do that. I'm not big on plants that are... Yeah, post, that. post plants for bugs. Right. But my bay tree yes. yeah, and my Meyer lemon are, lemon are worth the effort. Yeah. And they did survive the winter. We got them under control before we came in. Uh, you also want to look for white fly. Little bitty, looks like almost specks of dandruff or little. And those again would be on the underside. Right. Everything likes the underleaf yeah. side. Well, it's tenderer there. And they don't have the sun on them. All right. How do I get the white fly off? Um, I would look for uh, an organic friendly uh, pesticide and spray them. First try, you use the I soap. Use soap. You use I the use soap. Soap, soapy water spray. S start and with have good luck with soapy yeah. water spray. Definitely start with the soapy water. Okay. Uh, only resort to the chemicals if you oh, have to. Yeah. The chemicals are a last resort in our gardens anyway. Um, I have to tell you, you have to be careful you're using the soapy water. Um, I have become aggressive and the soapy water actually will clog the pores of the leaf. Oh, wither and die on you. It's just like, it's done. So you have to be careful about how much you spray on there. Um, let's review the season. We want to walk around the yard and see what did well and what did not. Uh, what prospered and what was a great idea this summer and what was, I'm not doing that again, not wasting that much space for one bloom. Go ahead. Okay, I do most of my vegetable gardening, as you know, in yes. containers. Yes. Uh, some of the things I just feel I don't get enough bang for the buck. Um, I've been at it so long that I don't bother with some of those things. This year, the cucumbers were stunning, wonderful. We'll show those to you and talk about them in the next show. Uh, but in the, um, say, zucchini, you can get zucchini so cheap. Yeah. In the, either, even in the zucchini in the produce department is good. Right. Uh, something that you thought was a sunny area yes. that it, maybe in the spring the before the trees <laughs> leaf out <laughs> yeah. uh, is a lovely sunny area and yeah. you're finding the yeah. things there are languishing because they're not uh, getting something any Something that uh, my mind is just not ready for, but it's time to think about spring bulbs. It, gardening is a year-round job. Uh, you have to plan ahead. And Kathy is planning us ahead <laughs> and ordering us um, catalogs for spring bulbs. You don't have to wait until it's freezing cold outside to plant these bulbs. And uh, I kind of like to order my bulbs online. Yes. You will find them, uh, you know, Meyer, Kroger, mm -hmm. Walgreens, the mm -hmm. hardware store. Everybody's got tulips and, and all these mm -hmm. different things. However, they're packed up for sale in the middle of summer. So yeah. they have been sitting around, they're kind of dried out. Um, you tend to get 
fresher bulbs that are going to do better for you uh, if you order them. Um, I would just Google spring bulbs and bring up uh, some different vendors. Uh, uh, but another thing that I came up yesterday when I was doing this and ordering some catalogs for Ev and I, uh, I found a website called davesgarden.com. And he has a review of hundreds of online gardening and plant companies. Um, Evelyn had a, a not so pleasant experience with a company this year. And this is a company that I have ordered with ordered from for probably 30 or 40 years. Always really high end when I worked for Bordines back in the 1970s. They used to order their seeds from this company. Don't know what happened because her seeds don't didn't know. germinate seeds and didn't germinate. Uh, in looking at it. Of, um, all this, of all the seeds I planted, what was it five or six packages, only two things came up. Very disappointing. Very I disappointing. Mean, it's not that it was that expensive. It's just that I wanted the flowers. And they didn't come. Well, if, if you go look at Dave's car, uh, garden com, they'll give you reviews, customer reviews mm -hmm. of the different online nurseries and seed companies. And you can kind of take that as you will. And uh, I definitely will do that because it looks like a lot of conglomerates have bought up. Uh, yes, yes, we and, were talking and, about uh, that. Yeah. Six, seven, eight of the best known companies are all owned by something called Gardens Alive. A so, super garden market. Yeah. So you want to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, online is sometimes good. Last year. It's uh, convenient. I'll give it that. Last year I had my rant right up there with yeah. Evelyn's yeah. lilac bulbs. I had ordered currant bushes. They sent them to me. <laughs> Would we have two it, feet of snow? Yeah, in mid March when there was two feet of snow on the ground, <laughs> uh, it says plant immediately. So anyway, buy, like anything, buyer beware. I've always be wanted to try jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, buyer beware. Yeah, yeah. And do you want to talk about how people can contact us if they yes, have some we questions? Have, we are setting up an uh, email address for the show. It is grandmasgarden at ontv.org. And if you have questions, we will try our best to answer them for you. Um, if you know if that plant is Jacob's Ladder or not, I'd like to know that too. Um, if you have a garden you'd like to share you, with oh, us. Oh, yes, yes, please. We would love to come and see your garden. We'd love to come and see what you're doing, what flowers you've got growing, what you might be willing to share. <laughs> we have had fun talking about all of these plants. We love gardening. Both Kathy and I are master gardeners. Uh, we've gone through the training, we've gone through the classes, we've gone through the volunteering, and now we're in our retirement years. And I, I just, there's nothing that makes my soul happier than looking at these beautiful colors, these beautiful flowers. I really don't know how I'm going to get through this next winter. I am not looking forward to it. But right now, let's enjoy the gardens that we've got and in invite us to come and see your garden too. Thank you.